Within the palace corridors, there lies a magical being behind each door. To awaken them, you must first grant their greatest wish. For some, it is to be worshipped, and for others, a grand combat. Regardless, each has a trial prepared for those who venture forward. Upon entering the corridor, there is an open door, and upon first glance it appears to be an empty city, and as my gaze deepens, I feel a gentle snowfall. In the center courtyard, there is a great statue of a man with his palms held skyward. My eyes follow the silhouette of the statue, and as they descend to its base, I see Siri seated at the statue's feet leaning up against it. I begin to approach her, yet her expression does not change. It is as though she already knows I'm here, but remains staring off into the distance. Still, she says nothing. I explain to her that I've come to free her from this place. Our eyes meet, and she smiles warmly. Ah, uh, how very kind of you. Thank you for coming. She says in a gentle tone. Her eyes peer off back into the distance as she continues. I enjoy puzzles and riddles as much as the next person. However, given her circumstances, such a thing seems inappropriate. <laughs> Does it not? That being said... She shifts to adjust herself. I would hate to squander this opportunity. If you would allow me, I would show you something I can't quite depict for it's alone. I nod my head in agreement, and she smiles. Siri leaps down from her perch, but just moments after her feet touch the ground, I'm enveloped by darkness. Before I can comprehend my surroundings, I glance over at Siri. Don't be afraid. She whispers gently. Just breathe. The world begins to take form before me. It looks like paradise. Lush green fields as far as the eye can see. Birds singing and humming as though conversing with one another. This place is beautiful, I thought to myself. I ask her where we are, recalling just moments ago being elsewhere. She takes a step forward and looks towards the sky, her hands folding over her chest. This is where all life ends. She looks back at me. Just down the path in the village. There is a Sorcerer Supreme who brought me here when I was but a small child. Although, he forbade me from speaking his name. She takes another step forward, then continues to look up toward the sky. In only a few moments, that star will explode. The natural end of its life. When it does, it will destroy all living beings. She walks over to a bench by a tree and gestures for me to take a seat. The beings that still live here have known this fate for thousands of years. And they've come to accept this as their reality. Siri sits next to me and stares off into the distance, almost as though she's recalling a far-off memory. Isn't that a terrible thing to tell a child? She nearly mumbles. She looks at me. When I was returned to my time, after witnessing the star explode, I was overtaken by a terrible feeling of cold. I shivered and lay on the ground, not wanting to be touched. How do you continue with the burden of knowing that no amount of love in this world, no amount of goodwill or peace, could prevent the end of all things. She looks at me as though she's expecting an answer, but the words do not come. Her 
her expression softens. I did not show you this to frighten you. She relaxes her shoulders and takes a deep breath. Several years later, I learned the truth. I was fooled. Her hands turn in her lap, and she looks at her open palms. This is not an event that will transpire. It is but a memory. Eons ago, this star had exploded. It eventually led to the matter that would create our universe. Everything that has happened to us here, in some small way, still lives on in us. She speaks in such a way that her voice gets softer as she speaks. She fully turns her body toward me and proposes a question. Isn't that something you would want a child to know? As I open my mouth to answer, an explosion goes off in the distance, and an alarm sounds. It is time. I turn my gaze to the star, and watch as it expands from but a speck of its size into something that will eventually consume the sky. Siri stares at me for a moment before standing up and walking around the bench. As my eyes turn to meet her pace, my vision is clouded by darkness. There is an almost deafening silence that I have never known, with the exception of my breath. My eyes widened as I slowly realized what I witnessed was not the last moments of a dying star, but rather I was staring into the palms of Ciri's hands. To her, it was a cruel thing for her to have done, shielding my vision so that I wouldn't have to witness the end of life. Nevertheless, she wrapped her hands around my eyes to obstruct my view. The burden of knowing weighs heavily upon her, as she averts her gaze from the crown of my head and looks up at the star, watching its sky crumble. Finally, her hands lift from my eyes and I find myself back in the snowy, empty city. I'm left, bewildered, at the memories I bore witness to. Siri takes a step away from me and turns around to hide her expression. I slowly turn toward her and call her name. Though she hesitates, I watch her shoulders slowly relax. She readies herself for a moment before turning around. She has a sweet but pained look on her face. I apologize if that seems strange to you. She says. <sighs> okay. I'm ready to leave now. <laughs>